My name is Dennis Normile, and I'm a contributing correspondent for Science Magazine. I have lived in Shanghai for almost two and a half years. I don't think uh, American people have a very good, a very deep knowledge of China. Of course, they know of the country, but uh, they probably don't have a very deep knowledge. Uh, as for myself, um, I was always interested in traveling, always interested in other parts of the world. Uh, so I, I've, I've always known about China. And as I said, I've, I lived in uh, Japan since the mid-1980s. And I started coming to China in the mid-1990s. Uh, so my, I have probably more experience with China than the average American. I mean, I knew a little bit about China's history, particularly when I was, I guess, just out of uh, university. It was about the time that um, the American president, Richard Nixon, came to China. And uh, my understanding is that that was sort of the beginning of China's opening up to the West and introducing economic reforms. Hi, Christina. It's Dennis. How are you? Yes, listen, I don't know if you've uh, heard or not, but uh, next week or the week after, depending on schedules, I'm going to be going to Hefei. Uh, I'll be talking to, uh, visiting several lab <coughs> labs at the University of Science and Technology in China. For my reporting, I've been to some very unusual places in China. I've been to the uh, Guizhou province, the site of the FAST radio telescope, which is a, just an awesome project. It's, it's a very beautiful area. Uh, it's very remote. It takes a long time to get there. You take mountain roads that weave back and forth, and finally you get into this one little basin where this huge radio telescope just fills the entire, the entire basin. It's, it's very impressive. It will be a phenomenal instrument for studying uh, some of the mysteries of the universe. And I was coming to China once or twice a year, for several years, and I was always surprised. It seemed like there were new buildings in Beijing every time I came. There were buildings that had not been there before. There was also much more traffic every time I came. So there, it was clear that the, there was a lot of very rapid development going on. Chinese people have been very, very friendly, have always been very helpful to me, and uh, I've, I've appreciated that very much. Um, I'm encouraging all my uh, relatives to come, to come visit while I'm here, and I can show them around a little bit. Well, I think it's overly simplistic, for one thing. Uh, I mean, that's the main thing. Uh, this, this, um, that kind of view is just overly simplistic. I, th I think there are questions about uh, whether China's economy can keep growing at the same pace that it has, but I think this is, uh, this would be normal. Once, you reach, once a country reaches a certain level of development, economic growth uh, becomes more moderate. And I think it's inevitable that that will happen in China at some point. I can say that I think I've seen very strong support for uh, scientific research. Uh, there, there is uh, uh, you know, continual increases in funding for research. China is planning a number of uh, big facilities. I, I think this is all very, uh, this is all very positive. I wrote about uh, a story about uh, an effort to uh, address the the gap in educational opportunity between rural areas and urban areas. And so I traveled to um, this early education center in uh, Shangxi province, a very remote area uh, where many of the children are what they call left behind children. Their parents have gone to, have migrated to the big cities for work. And often these children are left in the care of, of their grandmother. And to provide um, 
some early childhood educational experiences that they might not otherwise have. This group um, has been establishing these early childhood education centers where the grandmothers can bring their children, bring their grandchildren. Um, there are uh, educational games, educational activities, uh, and the kids can play with other kids their age. Often uh, in many rural areas, families are quite isolated. And so I was able to visit one of these centers and, uh, and played a little bit with some of the little kids. She, I, she was, the little girl was just uh, happy to have a playmate. Um, they hope to follow these children for many years. And they're predicting based on preliminary results and results of similar programs in other countries. This will give the children something like a, a step up in, their, in the, their intellectual development and in their educational achievements.